Cancer is a devastating disease in this country. According to the CDC, more than 18 million people have been diagnosed with cancer. One of the main treatments for cancer is, of course, chemotherapy. About 40% of those who go through chemo suffer from a horrible complication called oral mucositis, and that's caused by the radiation. According to the Oral Cancer Foundation, that can cause inflammation or severe ulcers in the mouth, which really makes it difficult for cancer patients to actually eat. Uh, this is a major problem, and of all people, NASA has come up with a possible solution. NASA is here live in our studio for today's Big Eye segment. We have Robin Schumacher from Quantum Devices who's going to tell us about a light used to treat the side effect. Dr. William Vaughn from the University of Alabama, Birmingham. And Andrew Keyes, who is the, uh, the chief technologist with NASA's Marshall Space Flight Center. Uh, Robin, let's start with you. Um, tell us how this chemo light works. Sure. And you can turn it on as well. Okay. Um, this is the light that was developed for the mucositis study. Uh, what we're looking at is light in the far red uh, visible spectrum at 670 nanometers. Uh, that wavelength was chosen because it's uh, preferred, if you will, to stimulate cytochrome oxidase, which is a molecule in every single cell of your body. It's within the mm. mitochondria, and we like to refer to them as like our little energizer rabbits. So this helps prevent this condition? It, it helps it by um, stimulating uh, cellular energy hmm. and then there's this whole cascade of events like a f photochemical reaction that takes place um, increasing the body's ability to fend things like that. There's off. a little bit of a backstory here though. H how did this all come to be? Well, um, Mr. Ignatius, the founder of our company and the inventor of this in uh, working with Wixar and... I mean, how was it originally used by NASA? Originally used as a wound healing instrument. Mm -hmm. um, was developed uh, for space missions. The very first thing we started to look for was uh, astronauts in space loon bone density and muscle mass. Mm -hmm. So we were looking at ways to possibly stimulate that. And, and Dr. Vaughn, this is really used to, to help with this mucositis, is that right? Yes, it, uh, it uh, near infrared light uh, creates a healing environment in the damaged mucous membranes, which results in lower pain scores and uh, lower visible damage to the mucous membranes so that the patient can recover faster. Hmm. Well, this is great news, obviously, for cancer patients who, who go through this. Um, is this FDA approved? I mean, when, when might we see this on the market? Well, I was talking to Robin about that earlier, and, and there are ways that it can be made available now that the uh, FDA has seen the data. Mm -hmm. And so it is, po it is possible on an ad hoc basis or investigators that want right. to do additional trials these can, are, can obtain. These are actually uh, FDA cleared right now oh, for, okay. the, for uh, the use of paint. Andrew, I have to ask you, I mean, how is it that NASA, not the medical world, uh, came up with this? I mean, this is such a big innovation. I'm sure you guys are working on some other big ones too, but how remarkable this is. That's true. NASA has a program of space technology investment, and we didn't initially go after this technology as a medical device. It was initially developed as a plant growth uh, light source for uh, plant growth uh, experiments in space. But uh, we are able to take technologies like this that benefit space applications and look at their terrestrial use and see how they can benefit uh, the medical community and uh, society at large. It's amazing. So maybe there will be more discoveries that, that can help from, we from NASA. Hope so. That really is uh, wonderful. We really appreciate all of you coming in and, uh, and bringing your red light to show us how this works. And uh, it's fascinating. Well, so hope to, see it. hope to see it soon. Really appreciate it. Uh, it may look like the movies, but it's real. Coming up next in Edge of Discovery, we go to an MIT lab for a glimpse